Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So today I learned you can program your HT without downloading CPS from some sketchy third-party website. We've all got HTs, and some of us have high-end HTs and mid-range HTs, and some of us have budget HTs. I have some of each. Programming them is always something that we want to do. And for me personally, absolutely, I want to do it in some kind of program instead of sitting there with the keyboard trying to front panel program a radio because I think that's a ginormous pain in the behind. And I found out today about a website that will allow you to program a whole ton of radios. And what's interesting is it also allows you to import and export chirp configurations out of the website. Now, you have to create an account. All they're asking for is an email address and a password. That's all the information they're requesting. And once you get into the website, you have a selection of a ton of radios. So we're gonna jump over to that, take a look at that screen, and see what all we can do in this website. All right, so here we are. This is the website I'm talking about. This is web.odmaster.net. I will put a link for this in the description below. So I found out about this through reading the TID Radio H3 manual. I did a video on the TID Radio H3 the other day. Great little radio, super great budget price. I suggest you go check that out. I'll put a link for the TID Radio below as well, the H3 ham version. But in their manual, they talked about Bluetooth programming. And I incorrectly assumed you had to buy a Bluetooth dingus for the radio to hook to your computer, and you don't. Your computer needs to have Bluetooth. Step one, got to have that. This all works through the web browser interface that you see here, which I thought was super cool. This system will program a ton of radios. Now, I'm specifically on a TID H3 is what I have that is hooked up right now. But you can see here on the side that there are a number of radios. Probably every Baofeng ever made, or their close cousins. TID radio, a ton of them, H3, the H8. And it's interesting that TID radio, under the TID radio thing, there are recognizable TID radio models, but there's also what I would call Baofeng model numbers. In any case, this purportedly programs all those, as well as TID radios, 10-way, Hawkpod, our old friend, the A36+, Plus, the Quan Shangs, right, which I've done a video on one before, decent little radio, Radiotity, several of those models, Rativus, or do you say Retivus, um, several of their models, a ton of radios that I've never heard of these models or these brands uh, before. Some of them I have. Uh, I've heard of some NESECU -E and I've heard of Radtel. Hofung, of course, a whole ton of them I haven't heard of. In any case, a ton of radios. So uh, we're hooked up to the TID H3 at this point, so that's the one we're going to mess with. And you'll see up here on the top that it says I'm connected because I connected through this web app to this radio, and I can do all my programming in this web interface. Super cool. I suppose it supports multiple languages. Obviously, I'm in English. I would assume that that is Chinese. And from here, we can do all of our all of our programming of the radio. So, as I said, I've already been monkeying with this. Let me jump in here real quick. I don't want this to be a super long video. This looks like CPS software. It has the basic interface look and feel of your average CPS software. But instead of having to download CPS software, I can use the web interface. So assuming that your radio is Bluetooth programmable or you have the correct cable, you should program, be able to program your radio through this interface. And if you don't want to use this to program your radio or for some reason your radio can't connect through this interface, this website also will import and export files for Chirp to use. So if we look in the interface, this is, like I said, pretty straightforward. I tinkered with this a little bit. This is um, VHF call. This is a local repeater. I don't think it, it doesn't,
put in the offset for me. I think I would have to manually put in the offset. I'm not sure what frequency hop means, but we can put in our tone codes, which I've already put in. Of course, VHF call doesn't have any tone codes. Tone code, power, our bandwidth, are we using wide or narrow FM, for example, whether the channel will lock out on busy so you can't overkey it. Uh, we can add this to a scan list if we wanted to. We can turn on PTT ID, which I talked about in previous video. Um, and we, of course, we can name it. This is the W4AP repeater. And of course, turn on scrambling, which is uh, for a FM radio, it's going to be voice inversion as hams, no bueno. So we can save that and it'll update it. Of course, when I save it, it goes all the way back to the, to the main menu. And as it loads up, you'll see up here on these bars, this is the channel information one. If I jump to optional features, here I can set specific radio features for this model of radio. All the features that you'd expect in a radio, and I'm not going to go through all these. I just thought this was so neat because now I don't have to download yet another piece of CPS software and put it on my PC. The problem I've seen with a lot of the CPS software is it's not named for what it is. I have CPS software that's named N. That's the name that Windows has when I installed it. What the hell radio is N? I have no freaking idea. Have to remember. Pain in the butt, right? This way I can eliminate a whole lot of CPS software on my computer. And potentially in this day and age, any potential malware threats through the vector of off-country CPS software. I've got the the H3 set up in Bluetooth mode because it supports that, which is an outstanding feature of the H3. And let's add in, let's make a couple changes here. Let's TX on 146.240 and set, I don't think that's auto offsetting for me. And let's put in my all-star node at 146.450. That is simplex. And we're going to set that to low power. And we're going to name that FEP link. And that's all we need to change. So let's save that. All right, we're all set up here. I'm going to tell the website to write our config to the radio. It is going to open the radio and tell it write. And there we go. And you'll notice the screen seems to update a little faster. The radio screen seems to update a little faster than the, than the website does. And that could be a browser thing. I, I don't know. Uh, they're calling this a beta. But we'll see. If we've added the, uh, my all-star link, then it worked. All right. So let's change to channel mode. Decall. Should have turned off the voice. We can turn down the volume. W4AP FEP link. And let's see if that keys up my all-star node. So yeah, that looks, like, that looks like that worked. So it works. You saw that list of radios that it supports. And again, I think one of the coolest features also is you can export this config into uh, a CSV file so you could pull that into Chirp if you'd rather use Chirp. It's just another way to program a radio. I'm using the Bluetooth programming for it. So that's what we demoed. Honestly, that's probably the more complicated way to do it anyway. Guys, that's all I have in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Ring the bell that's in the dingus below. And that way you'll get notified whenever I post any new videos. Y'all have a great day. 73.